Do you feel things are getting more and more expensive recently? Do you have something that you found all of a sudden you can't afford? Well, let's talk about inflation today. I'm Saina, and welcome to today's show. Before I even start, there's one more thing I need to say. We are Facts Tell, a news talk show that brings you the latest stories behind news every week. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And without further ado, let's go to today's topic. Inflation. Inflation in the U.S. rose unexpectedly to a staggering 8.6% last month. It's literally going through the roof as it's a 40-year high. Back to then, it was during the 1980s oil glut caused by falling demand right after the 1970s energy crisis. Well, this will actually be worse than the 1970s before it's over. You know, the United States is now a debtor nation. And in the 1970s, we were a creditor nation. We have never printed nearly as much money as we have been printing. So what exactly is inflation? How would it affect our life? If you already know what inflation is, you can skip this part and jump directly to what impacts it has. In the nutshell, Inflation is exactly the rate of increase in price over a given period of time, and it's dictated by two factors, money supply and goods supply. When goods supply become less and everything else stays the same, or when money suddenly increases and the goods stays the same, there will be increase in prices. What's even worse is when there are more money yet limited goods, then we're doomed to have inflation. An important indicator of inflation is called CPI, Consumer Price Index, which we often see in the news. With that in mind, you might start wondering what caused inflation in America this time. But before we get into that details, let's look at two unusual features of the high inflation in America this year. First of all, it's better well beyond energy and the goods, which are mostly influenced by jammed supply chain due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Even markets for second-hand cars got pumped up. And shelter, gasoline, and food are the three largest contributors to CPI increase. Secondly, it also rose sharply in quite a short time. Since the subprime crisis, inflation in the U.S. has remained quite low for almost a decade. Its annual inflation rates were always around 2% in recent years. Back in 2014 and 2015, it was even less than 1%. Yet, as of May this year, the year-on-year -year growth in CPI exceeded 7% for six consecutive months, which led to the current situation. Some people choose to calmly accept the reality. It's going to affect everybody. Uh, food costs are up, transportation costs are up, housing is way up. Uh, the housing market is ridiculous. It's, it's beyond ridiculous. Before you used to pay to fill up this car at like 98 bucks, now it's going to be more than $100. I feel as if though it is escalating. I feel like things are getting worse. You know, times is bad right now. Things in the economy, and nothing's getting better right now, in all honesty. Yet some went quite extreme on this. Right now, it's definitely helping. Gas is high. Um, just when you need extra money, it's an easy process. There's nothing really hard about it. So according to Ethan Harris, head of global economic research at the Bank of America, virtually every sector has higher than normal inflation. It's made its way into every new and cranny of the economy. That's the thing that makes this concerning because it means it's likely to persist. Okay, so we're talking about stubborn inflation. But what are the reasons behind it? If we we're talking about a U.S. economy, there's one institution that we cannot avoid mentioning, the Federal Reserve. At the height of financial crisis in 2008, the Fed embarked on an unprecedented and experimental path to power America's economy, the so-called ZERP policy, or Zero Interest Rate Policy. It's really about Fed creating easy money for the market by holding the short-term interest rates near zero. And this policy continued for a number of years. When facing the COVID-19 pandemic, the Federal Reserve adopted an extremely loose monetary policy, resulted in a flood of liquidity. In March 2020, the Fed made emergency rate cuts, bringing its benchmark interest rates down to 0 to 0.25%. 0 
It first announced a 700 billion U.S. dollars quantitative easing program. Yet one week later, this QE program was made unlimited. I don't want to bombard you with all these jargons and terminologies. All you need to know is that within two years, from the end of February 2020 to the end of March 2022, the total assets of the Federal Reserve expanded from 4.2 trillion to nearly 9 trillion U.S. dollars. The thing is. No country could double its industry production capacity within two years, but the Fed doubled its balance sheet. Along with ZERP for the past decade, all of these created a huge problem, or should we say, an incubator, a liquidity basis for high inflation. Let's go to the second reason: the American Rescue Plan. It is the 1.9 trillion stimulus bill Democrats passed in March last year. It may become U.S. President Joe Biden's biggest achievement. This massive spending law, including 1,400 checks for each person in a family, great expansion of unemployment insurance and child tax credit benefits, also has hundreds of billions of dollars in aid to state and local governments. The intention of this bill was fantastic. It was to help people, which it did to some extent. The only problem is that a lot of people who got the money weren't the desperate ones, and this giant amount of money. 1.9 trillion U.S. dollars was spent too quickly, like this. This is when Warren Buffett described the spending bill as a buying frenzy, which made the American economy red hot in a speech back in March this year. They can't stop people from buying things, and we can't deliver them. And they say, "Well, that's okay because nobody else can deliver them either, and we'll wait for three months or something." And sort of the backlog grows, and then we thought it would end when the $600 payments ended, and I think you know around August of last. Year, it just kept going, and it, it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, and I get the figures. This is what the problem is. The thing is, this spending bill has got nothing to do with helping America control its pandemic, which caused one million deaths already. The COVID-19 pandemic, which many countries spent huge efforts to fight, is still affecting the global supply chain and world trade. Remember, at the very beginning, we were talking about what inflation is. When everyone has extra money and they are limited to goods, the spending bill can't change the fact that many countries are still battling the pandemic and its effects. So no matter how the American Rescue Plan rescues America, if it can't help the world control COVID-19, it just puts more gasoline on the fire. And here comes the third reason: we all know that the U.S. is a country with a large economic and consumption volume. In fact, consumption expenditure accounts for more than 80 percent of its GDP. However, its industrial scale is relatively small, with manufacturing accounting for less than 11 percent of its GDP. There's a serious mismatch between domestic supply and demand, which is the structural cause of high inflation. Well, the truth is, U.S. used to be the world's largest manufacturing power, yet it prioritized the development of high-margin, high-tech industries and service industries by its technological advantage and dollar hegemony. And gradually transferred its low-margin, high-pollution manufacturing industry to other countries. Yet the long-term outmigration of factories has resulted in hollowing out a manufacturing industry. Although the White House hopes to rebuild its domestic manufacturing system through reindustrialization, it has made little progress due to the cost disadvantage. So when the U.S. fiscal and monetary policies overheated demand. While industry hollowing led to insufficient supply, the gap between domestic supply and demand just widened, thus worsening the inflation. Trade protectionism is another reason behind high prices. Since the summer of 2018, former U.S. President Donald Trump imposed multiple rounds of tariffs on more than 500 billion U.S. dollars in Chinese imports under Section 301 of the U.S. Trade Act of 1974. However, these tariffs, according to National Retail Federation, were paid by American companies, which ultimately drove up the prices paid by consumers. In fact, a lot of people don't know that tariffs are like taxes that normal people pay. In this case, between China and U.S. trade wall, they are paid by American farmers, retailers, manufacturers, businesses, and consumers. Overall, tariffs have cost Americans more than 120 billion U.S. dollars since the trade war began, according to tariffs heard Harlan. In an open letter that NRF wrote to U.S. President Joe Biden in May this year, it clearly stated that 
ending the trade war is the most direct and effective policy to curb inflation in the U.S. Once tariffs on Chinese goods imposed during Trump's term are lifted, prices in the U.S. can go down by 1.3 percent. Russia-Ukraine crisis is another reason that also caused sharp increases in price of commodities, including crude oil, natural gas, minerals, and food, since both countries are major global resource exporters. Yet the current high inflation in the U.S. isn't only the product of two black swan events of COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine conflict; it is also an inevitable result of excessive physical and monetary policy stimulus. Unbalanced industrial structure and high tariffs. Speaking of the black swans, some are natural, some are man-made. Without the eastward expansion of NATO, the Russia-Ukraine crisis wouldn't happen. I explained how the U.S. fan the flames in Ukraine in the last episode. If you're interested, you can go and have a look. In the face of a rising inflation, the U.S. has been forced to start a policy contraction process, which will inevitably increase the risk of economic stagnation and may even cause spillover effects on emerging economies, triggering a series of currency and debt crises. It may affect everyone's life even more and make our life much more expensive in the future. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.